Welcome to the Providence Kitchen. Uh, welcome to 2021. So far, it's off to a great start, as we all know. Oh, mother. Okay. But we're hoping this meal will bring you a little bit of comfort and uh, maybe a reason to turn off the TV for a little while, gather in the kitchen, gather around your table, cook a little food, sit down, drink a little wine, relax, unwind a little bit, maybe get a puppy, whatever you need to do to get through this. Um, anyway, here we go. For this week's menu, we're calling it New Year Old Friends. So we're highlighting ingredients that are, that we procure from people that we've known for many, many years. And in the case of the first course, we're talking about Nancy Wynn of Morningstar Seafood in Stonington, Maine. I've known Nancy for more than 20 years, and we've, I've used her scallops pretty much exclusively ever since I was at the Water Grill, which is going way back for those of you that remember. And um, Nancy's a wonderful lady, uh, spends part of her year in Maine and the other part of the year in Guatemala, working with people for um, indigenous rights and proper housing. She also just happens to be the best source for scallops in the country. And uh, I've known that for a long time. And so we're smack dab in the middle of the main scallop season, and so it seemed perfectly appropriate to have them on this menu. So when the scallops come to you, they're gonna be raw, and they're gonna be in this container with a little bit of buckwheat, a lemon, and some turnip. And we've also given you a sauce, which I have over on the stove. So we're gonna have to cook these scallops. It doesn't take but a couple of minutes, and it's almost foolproof the way we've set it up for you. So we're gonna go over to the stove now, and I'm gonna show you how to put it all together. Okay, so if you remember last time, we did a menu where you had to cook something or you had sauces. We talked about this contraption right here. So I have, this is a scallop sauce. This is a puree that's gonna go underneath the um, steel head, which we'll talk about in a minute. Little towel, little pan, little hot water. Put them both in there, take the lid off, let them get hot, and they'll be ready for you when you need them, okay? So first off, with the scallops, <clears throat> as I said, we've got the buckwheat there in the bottom, and we also have the scallops and the turnips. Choose a pan that's appropriate. If, if you're cooking for just one, obviously a small pan is fine. If it's two or three, you're gonna need a slightly larger pan. First thing you're gonna to do, wanna to do is take the already warm scallop broth and put it in the pan. With me so far? You've done this before, it's not that hard. Now we're gonna take that and put it on the fire. Next, you're gonna to have to be able to identify a turnip from a scallop, which I think you're all capable of. So we're gonna nudge the turnips over there with a buckwheat. And then we're gonna drop just the turnip and the buckwheat into the warming sauce. For now, we're gonna leave the scallops behind in the tray. And what you wanna do is you wanna just see that sauce start to bubble a little bit. And this way, uh, what we're doing is we're giving the turnip and the buckwheat a chance to get hot before the scallops. Because the scallops won't take very long at all to warm in this sauce. And so if we put them all in at the same time, what's going to happen? Anybody? Anyone out there? The scallops are going to get tough. That's right. So now we're going to take the scallops. We're going to drop them in there. We're going to warm them in this broth, which is made with dashi and all of the beards from the scallops and uh, just a little touch of butter. These scallops were wiggling this morning when they arrived. And now we're just going to put them in there once we get them off the spoon. And we're gonna warm them up in that broth, in that sauce. You can flip the scops over once or twice in the pan. Just a little bit like that. We're just trying to like firm up the scallops a bit. Just kind of introduce them to the heat. We're not trying to clobber them with the heat. We want them to, to keep the texture that they have, the beautiful like firm texture that they have. And if, uh, if we cook them too much, they'll go from firm to rubbery. And that's not what we want at all. We want to keep just their beautiful natural texture. And we want them to be just kind of like warm through. That's all we need. So there we go. One last little simmer. Now we're going to start to put it on the plate. Scallops are ready. I'm going to put the scallops down in the bowl like that. Now 
make a little rosas, as we say in the kitchen. Drop the turnips down. And then the Japanese buckwheat, just a little bit over and around. There's also a little brunoise of carrots from Wiser Farms in there. And then I have this crispy buckwheat, Japanese buckwheat, which we've braised and then fried. We're going to put that over the top. And then last but not least, black truffle and chive. You're just going to put that all over the dish, just like that. And do this at the table. So the aroma of the truffle, when it hits the hot plate, will begin to like, will just sort of pop off the plate. And then I want you to hit it with just a few drops of lemon juice, just a little bit, very little. And there you go, that's the dish. So for the bread service this week, we have a sesame AP, which is right here. I suggest you're gonna want this bread on the table when the scallops are ready. So I suggest you pop this in the oven so that it's hot and ready to go when the scallops are, are, come to the table. In a 375 degree oven, about five minutes, bread will be perfect, that's it. And then we're also gonna send you a little bit of salted butter. And then uh, we can talk about the main course, right, which is right here. In this course, we are celebrating our friends at Quinault Pride Seafood. They're in Taloha, Washington. They are the Quinault Tribal Nation. That's who we actually buy the fish from. They have sovereign land up there. They um, are the only ones that are allowed to fish the Quinault River, where they catch these beautiful steelhead. They also catch king salmon during the season. This steelhead comes from them. It's one of my favorite fish. These fish are caught by gill nets. And we get the fish usually 24 hours after they come out of the river. So their fish is always impeccable, impeccable quality. Absolutely perfect. And that's why I work with them for so long. So this fish has already been lightly cooked and covered with a horseradish crust, which we browned just a little bit for you. The beets, which we just sort of braised and then glazed. And then over here, this uh, Swiss chard is also filled with yellow beet and house-made sauerkraut, just a little touch of cream and a little bit of mustard. Anyway, in order to get this ready for the table, all you gotta do, temper the fish for an hour or so before you start, preheat your oven to 375 degrees, and it'll take just about five minutes to get the fish perfect for the plate. So the other parts of the dish are this little beet gastrique. It's just natural beet juice. We haven't done anything to it except season it. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of citric acid, a little bit of vinegar, liquid shio koji, and that's pretty much it. And then on the fire over there, I have a puree of leek, which is infused with horseradish as well. And that's gonna be it. That will round out the food. All right, so five minutes have passed. We'll give it a check. Fish looks good, ready to go. If you like, you can hit it just a little bit of Malden salt, a little bit on the Swiss chard, a little bit on the beet. We'll start with a puree. We can put that down. You can do this however you like. It's up to you. I'll maybe start out with just a little circle of that. Then <clears throat> I'm gonna, on one side of the puree, I'm gonna put our little packet of yellow beet. On the other side, I'll put the glazed beet. And then these are the stems from the Swiss chard, which we could put on the plate as well. Maybe over here, just like that. And then the fish will go right in the middle. Just like that. And then this gastrique, you can just do whatever you feel. Like, go crazy. Whoever's had the most to drink in the house before dinner is served, let them put the gastrique on the plate. That'll be fun. There you go. That's the dish. So uh, for dessert this week, Mac and Kathy have made this beautiful... Banana ganache chocolate and mousse and vanilla cream. And for pedophores we have Bailey's Bonbon. There you have it folks, that's our menu. Check out our Instagram page this week or next week we'll be put, posting stuff for Valentine's Day, which is quickly approaching. Sunday the 14th of February as you all know. I had hoped that we'd be able to welcome you here and the restaurant for Valentine's Day, but it certainly doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And so um, we'll just make plans to keep doing what we're doing. We're certainly going to do everything we can to make it as special as we can for you. And that's pretty much it. Thanks, as always, for the support. Wear a mask. Be well. Hopefully get a vaccine. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much.